There's my famous saying, a good technician is observant of his surroundings. Time, timer flash seven times. ET system. You ain't testing, you're guessing. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Hope everyone's having a great day. Thank you for tuning in to another great and exciting episode of The Adventures of Mikey Pipes. All right, you're gonna like this one. Wait for it. See that? Train, five ton, 13 seater. And what's going on right now is that the low pressure switch, which is down there somewhere. Where are you? Well, I don't even see a low pressure switch. Let me stop putzing around with this thing and unplug it. So this is what the salt in the air does. I'm literally about, uh, I want to say about maybe 700 feet from the ocean. You see how the salt in the air eats away everything. See that? Oh, look at that. AE 2000, 2000T heat pump. It's R22. Yep, R22. <laughs> All right, so if you look down there, we actually, we do have a low pressure switch, which is that one, right? That one right there, the center of the screen. See that one? Center of the screen. It looks more further away. It's hooked up to the, um, the three quarter inch tubing right there, which is going into the compressor. And that's the low pressure switch. The one right now in the center of the screen, that's the high pressure switch. And what's going on here, by what it was doing, it was short cycle. It was not short cycling, but it was running. Compressor compresses. The pressure is so low, it immediately turns the system off. Pressure equalizes, turns back on. So let me get the gauges to confirm that. but there's some oil residue there. It's probably when they were taking the their gauges off. All right, let's take a look at this electrical compartment. Nice, looks nice and clean there. That contactor looks kinda, looks kinda suspect. Looks kinda suspect humming a little bit there's a capacitor bet you this was replaced yep sure was see the condenser fan motor was replaced came from Johnstone comes with those turbo caps so you can make uh, I think up to 17 no you can make up to 15 microfarads with this all right my Testo 557S is zeroed out. I'm gonna take my high pressure hose and get it started right there. Let's take a look at what the pressures are. Make sure this is closed. And I'm just gonna just purge a little air out of there. And you can see she's severely overcharged. I mean, um, undercharged. Huge leak. All right, let me take a little a little tight there, it's snug. All right, my Nipix. I love Nipix, by the way. Let me know what you guys use. What's your preferred go-to brand? Let me know in your comment section down below, guys. All right. There you go. 
I love these low loss fittings, by the way. All right. They should be equal, but they're not. I doubt the system is frozen because there's not even enough refrigerant for it to condense. Well, she's a leaker, mama. She's definitely a leaker. Only 80 PSI in the system. Let's go take a look at that uh, uh, the evaporator coil in the attic. See if we see any oil and I'll get my electronic leak detector by Ellie Tech. Gotta give a shout out to Ellie Tech. You know, they, uh, they're a sponsor of the channel. You know, they sent us that vacuum pump, which they took constructive criticism, same way I do. And uh, they wanted me to create another video with their electronic leak detector. And uh, we're gonna use it here. All right, I'm just putting everything away. Let's go to the truck and uh, let's get into that attic. All right, up in the attic. Wow, it's the first. It's the floor. Kind of. The light switch don't work though, but. Uh. And look what we have here. A TAM 9. Guaranteed. Is it a TAM 9? No, I think it's a TAM 7. Yeah, it's a TAM 7. I can almost guarantee this evaporator coil is leaking. Almost a guarantee. And towels, okay. It's very loud too. Notice. I need to get some light up in here. It's a TV, oh, it's a TV antenna. Huh. Like magic, like magic. I love it. All right. switch off let me get up inside this bitch all right just taking off the access panel exposing the evaporator coil and a good technician is observant of his surroundings and if we take a look at that right there that's oil residue you see that and if you take a further look inside there straight ahead that's all like mold and mildew, it's gross. Very, very gross. And there's some more oil residue right there. So sometimes you just have to be observant. You don't need the tools. You don't need high tech gadgets. Yes, it's nice to have that. But we're gonna unmute this. And we're gonna take this Ellie Tech, the IR200. Let's see what happens. Now, the next step of the service call is calling train, um, which used to be the Woolworth Group, uh, where they were bought by Ferguson. So now I need to call Ferguson and get pricing and availability on a new evaporator coil. Fun. And then we'll present the options to the homeowner. Stay tuned. All right, here's my dilemma. Call up train, it's one to two weeks away. <laughs> so, imagine that conversation with the homeowner, right? And she goes, listen, Mikey Pipes, like, I am not going to be schwitzing in my house for two weeks. I was like, you got to pump it up. And I was like, listen, if I add, if I add it, it's going to leak out, you know? Um, so she goes, I don't care. Just put it in. And that's what I'm doing. What would you do? Let me get your thoughts in the comment section down below. Two weeks, possibly, of no cooling on your first floor of your house, or alternatively, instant gratification. 
What are you going to do? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. All right. Let's purge the air out of there. Good. This tank is kind of empty. Kind of. I also spoke to her. Yeah, it's fine. I also spoke to her about the uh, that mold and mildew growth that's going on in the uh, in the air handler, and she's like, "Well, put a UV light in there." I was like, "Okay, no problem." Let me go get the other tank because this is not going to be enough to do anything. All right, let's go to the truck. All right, back up. Let me stop being one-handed, Mike. And use two hands. Eh, I think I got it. Someone's gonna comment. Is laying it in the truck a DOT approved method? Right? There's always that. There's always that troll. Uh, there's always that troll. So, as a homeowner, tell me what would you have had the HVAC contractor do? money being no object. I right, forget about the cost of anything. And if you're a professional, how would you have handled this? Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. Don't forget, if you ain't tested, you're a guest. If you want a free sticker, details down in the description box down below. Be well, God bless. Stay, stay safe.